for our second topic, the discussion is titled The Seven Lessons for a Healthy Virtual Environment or Classroom Environment, a Retrospection of the Last 862 Days Under the Pandemic. So our speaker is the current Associate Dean of the Graduate School, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and is an Assistant Professor of the Environmental Biology Division, Institute of Biological Sciences, College of Arts and Sciences, UPLB. He received academic distinctions as top international student and best presenter during the midterm presentations in the Department of Biotechnology, Osaka University in December 2013, where he earned his PhD in Engineering, Advanced Science and Biotechnology. He is also the three-time recipient of the UP International Publication Award from November 2013, October 2013, and October 2019. He has been involved in several scientific projects, publications, and research paper presentations, and has served as board member of the Philippine Society for Microbiology, Philly James National Chapter, and was president of the Philly James Southern Luzon Chapter. At UPOU, he previously handled the core GE course, Science 11, Living Systems, Concepts, and Dynamics. Everyone, please join me in welcoming Dr. Ronilo Jose D. Flores. Thank you very much, Christopher, for that very generous introduction. I did not know that my picture is going to be flashed on screen, but um, do I look happy here? <laughs> I am very happy to be with you today, um, especially when I saw each and every one of you. I'm, I felt like I'm, I'm, I'm in the presence of uh, luminaries and my idols in the academe, Professor Emeritus Macrina T. Zafaralia. She was my first boss in my very first research engagement with the university. We went to, I, I'm, I'm sure she remembers, we went to a lot of different islands for our red algae project and that is when i first learned about the ropes of conducting research uh, in a government institution with all of the procurement <laughs> uh, processes thank you ma'am for all of the things that i've learned under your tutelage Marapong salamat, and i'm very honored that you'll be the discussant of this presentation and i'm frankly i'm quite nervous about it but again thank you very much for the invitation um dr laurel mentioned a lot of things that are very true and i think we can reflect on and we have experience in fact uh, as teachers under the this pandemic uh, one thing that is very interesting with my experience with upou is that when the pandemic hit and I was invited to be part of, to, to, to teach um, Science 11, um, we were under a pandemic and it was actually my first time handling a course in, in UPOU. It was also my first time to see and experience for myself Moodle. <laughs> At first, it was really, really um, challenging. And just like Dr. Laurel, I, I'm a frequent consult, uh, I'm a frequent client of uh, Krista at the AA program. So, um, and during the time when I was teaching Science 11, um, I was in the longest quarantine ever because uh, our family got exposed to to COVID and my brother had long COVID. And during that time, um, the protocols or the, the DOH protocols were not, um, were very strict. So as long as you tested positive, you cannot go out and, you know, reintroduce yourself to the world. So we ended up quarantining for about a month or five weeks. We waited until my brother had a negative test result. And because he had long COVID, so he was he kept on getting positive results. So we were under a quarantine when I was teaching Science 11. So uh, the pressure was... Uh, both on my students and myself and the uh, the um, the faculty what you call that the fic's the tutors right um my experience with science, science 11 was very unique it was the largest ever class that i have ever 
experience in my short in my entire time as a teacher which is 13 years 357 students uh, to be exact um and two of them are here <laughs> sila uh, ikaw diba and yeah, dalawa sila so two of them are my student and okay so because you're here i will not be presenting science 11 um um in as soon as Dr. Buo told me about this so, and the, the topic, I was on my way to Capones Island. And so I started my introspection or a retrospect of what has happened in the past 862 days. I googled that. I did not compute it myself. So 862 days from March 16 until today. And I came up with seven actually 15 but i tried to make it shorter seven realizations or lessons that i I've, I've learned in the past 862 years from sci 11 and from the other courses that i have taught or i've been teaching in the university mostly of the things that i will share with you today are those from my other courses that uh, we co-develop co-wrote and administered during the time of the pandemic so next slide so the world shifted. This is my favorite slide. Every course that I handle, I put a mask all over Earth's face because indeed the world changed. Uh, I wanted to sing a song, but uh, Professor Maquer is here. She's, <laughs> she's my choral director. Um, something has changed within me is a line from a song defying gravity. And I think that resonates so if you look closely to the lyrics of the song, it would resonate to each and every one of us, both teachers and students, because this pandemic indeed really changed us. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you can pinpoint the changes that you have gone through, but I think you can, but there are some changes that you cannot really understand, like why your back hurts. It's because we've been sitting all day long. Why your attention span or why do you hate looking at the mirror, at, at the television screen. I share your sentiment, Dr. Laurel. I do not like, I'm sorry if I'm saying that. Um, um, it's not that I don't like, but I'm kind of tired of lecturing on a blank screen because I feel like, to be honest, I'm talking to an aquarium full of fish. If you take a look at the Zoom screen, right? There's a Zoom screen here. If you take a look at the screen, and if you, whether or not you require students to open their cameras, I always find myself entertained and and brought to a place of my, uh, brought to a time where in my childhood we had this big aquarium. I used to blank, stare blankly at the fish swimming around the aquarium. That's how I feel sometimes when I do classes. So I really had to, for one, entertain my students but on the larger part of it, entertain myself. So in retrospect, um, some of the things that I introduced in my classes were 50% for the entertainment of my students and of course learning and 50% for my own entertainment. Because um, I really can't stand I'm not as patient as Dr. Laurel. She prints all of her, all of the literature. I'm not as patient. So later on, you will see uh, the things that I ask my students to, to do. Um, we had a singing session. We had talents night on a science course, right? So later. So the world shifted and it is constantly shifting. Next. March 16, 2020 was the day, the day to remember. And it has been 862 days since that time. Again, we're all familiar with the quarantine phases, but one thing is common here, education or the delivery of, of learning is via remote online. Whether, whether you are from OU or not, you had to, you had to do online learning. And so we, our educational system, I, I'm sure you know this, um, underwent a lot of challenges you know, on, of online delivery because, you know, um, we're not ready for it. We were not ready for it in 2020. 
Ayan. So, nag, nag ano lang po ako ng ibang clips that I found online. Too tired to teach. Too tired to learn. Because it's indeed very tiring. And so, as educators, as teachers, we have to find ways. I'm not endorsing BDO, but we should we find ways in order to engage our students. But in order to also deliver you know, the contents and the outcomes of the, of the course. Again, we know that remote learning, it can be disadvantages to some students. And we've seen that in our classes. I've seen that in Sci 11 from amongst the 350 students that I had last year. Um, you would sometimes receive emails of them you know, the entire family being under quarantine, they had no internet in the quarantine facility. And if you impose strict guidelines, how will they be able to submit their the outputs on time? So it's really, it's really a challenge. You no, know? it's really a challenge of being, you know, of on the one side, upholding this idea of honor and excellence, because you have to be excellent. But on the other side, Compassion, really have to be compassionate and put the, the welfare of the student and the teachers first. Um, balik ulit. Uh, back. So technological divide. No, I'm not sure if even in OU, you know, we, would, we would assume that since it's open university, we would assume that everybody would be adept and, you know, and very well versed with the online uh, learning environment. But... We've seen that some students would still have difficulty accessing or connecting to the internet for one and connecting to other, to other students as Dr. Laurel has said a while ago. And so therefore, we have to adapt. We have to create or we have to be creative no, in our ways. Next. I'm a fan of Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I always try to insert a slide in all of my courses, even in my evolution course. I handle evolutionary biology. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Because if you, if you know how to study, if, you are, if a student understands how it is to become effective as a student, then perhaps you would you can equip them you can capacitate them in or you can usher them to triumph in, in short you can usher them to finish the course well so i sometimes you know um insert something like this next slide so my first lesson is know your stakes stakeholder situation uh i in all of the courses that i have been handling every even before the pandemic started i always have had uh, a, a survey like a a survey what do you want me to know about you you remember i don't know the practice with other ucus but in uplb we used to have this student data sheet do you remember the student data sheet that they have to sign a uh, fill in with their schedule and their personal information and at the end of the student data sheet i normally ask them what is that something that you wish me to know about you? It's going to be between the two of us. Um, and true enough, there were some instances where I, I, where I found some issues. For example, I had this student, I won't mention his name. It was in STS-1, it's a GE course. And then upon reviewing the student data sheets of my students, I found out that at the back of the sheet, he wrote, Sir, kapag po nag-absent ako, um, can you please kindly check on me because I am, I, I was diagnosed, I was, I'm clinically depressed and sometimes when, and sometimes I need to talk. So it, it was at the start of the semester. And so, makikita nyo na po, you would see the students that, you know, you need to be, um, you, you need to be not careful about, but you need to extend a little bit more of care and compassion. And true enough, that semester, I think it was on the fourth, malapit ng matapos, so 13th or 14th week, three consecutive absences he had in our class. And I remembered the student data sheet and I reached out to him and he passed the course. He did not get a one, he got a two, he got a two, but he was able to 
to find the courage within himself to you know to pursue and push through and now he's already graduated and one funny thing is during his graduation virtual graduation right after his name was called he messaged me in my email email pa eh, hindi talaga personal email thanking me because i reached out to him that time so i guess that's one lesson that i really um try to keep in me because you know sometimes it just takes a little bit of surveying <laughs> and attention ayon know your stakeholder situation well it's not probably some of you don't know i i also coach a varsity team of uplb the uplb men's this one so that's me 30 pounds ago uh, <laughs> so and this is my team they're the nicest the most gorgeous team and so be right, right before the pandemic um we were on our way to building or preparing for a competition that's our major competition um and so we were you know working out and um trying to achieve the level of fitness that a varsity well an a varsity team would have be coming into a competition and so the pandemic hit and you can just imagine the stress of these players you cannot go out you cannot play. They don't have equipment at home. They are they are they were in the prime of their physical fitness. And then online learning. Right? So what could go wrong? <laughs> More. And so as part of uh, an intervention, so we did I actually presented this in an, a conference, remember? <laughs> we were together. Um we tried to follow their habits, their perception of stress, their physical activity. Next. So they were really stressed, as you would see. And so we, across the, the, uh, the different uh, GCQ classification from the strictest to the less strict, how they adapted. Sometimes uh, some of them even created um, exercises based on um, household chores just to be able to exercise. So, pag tinanong mo, anong mga activities nyo, just to be able to move. Nagbubunot po kami, pero may floor polisher naman. <laughs> so, those kinds of things. So, majority felt that their level of physical fitness has not improved. For a varsity player, this is a big deal. Because their daily life in the university was just to study daytime and then devote two or three hours at night for workout and then study. And then you just, then you suddenly remove the workout time. Well, that's a big, big blow, I guess, uh, because that's, that's how they find their time to, to relax, I think. Next. Of course, we also followed their nutrition habits. So one of my assistant coaches is a nutritionist. So, um, they started eating unhealthy food because they were stuck at home and they started to gain weight no but they were not overweight um i think it was a small proportion of them that got overweight over the pandemic so yeah we did a lot of advising and uh, we actually opened a virtual training portal that's one of the adaptations that we did. So the things that we can do, the things, the exercises that they can do at home, we posted all of these in the in the virtual classroom. So and Paul, and we also did a lot of pep talks. We organized pep talks, mindfulness, uh, uh, nutrition, quarant fitness. Okay, nutrition education was also there. We did a, I think it this was a bi-monthly. Kumustahan, kasama na dito yung, mga, yung, yung uh, nutrition uh, education. Next. Again, stress is a major factor in their life as a student athlete. So next, 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 next. So Rotas and Kahapa in 2020 also released a paper that outlined the different effects of the online learning setup to the different to different students. And internet learning resources overloading pure 
poor or lack of communications and of course mental health struggles were were part of the list of the effects or the ill effects of the pandemic that is also consistent with what dr laurel was mentioning a, a while ago next number two lesson so support and compassion are key um i was uh, thinking about this um while on the while on the bus i uh, while on the van and i i told myself i realized that um we, we live in an extraordinary world now so a lot has changed so we really have to be kind to to ourselves and to our students so again um we have to find ways in order to address or to help minimize the technological divide and the different um issues next okay the third one is explore new things or fields that may interest students one thing that i realized uh, this pandemic is that with the massive revisions or revising of the curriculum or the subjects or the topics that we can offer um it opened up an opportunity for us to introduce topics that have not been introduced before, new topics that may interest the students, no? that may pick their interest. Example, some of you might see me in some of their fora talking about planetary health because this is something close to our hearts, to my heart in particular. It's a new, it's relatively new it was formally launched uh, by the lancet in 2015 um it's a field and movement focused on understanding the human health impacts of um human caused ecological disruptions right and um, i'm also very proud to say that upou is probably the first or one of the first institutions to support a webinar or a seminar on planetary health. I think it was in 2018 or 2019 when Renzo Ginto came back from Harvard and UPOU um, sponsored a, an event. So we, so this is Planetary Health Philippines. We just opened that. Next. These are the people behind the Planetary Health Philippines. And this is actually a conceptual framework of what it is. So at the center of it is planetary health, the health of the planet and the people. And around it are the different disciplines or topics or themes. It can be communica uh, communicable diseases, wellness, changing food systems, biochemical flows, um, pollution, et cetera, and how they interact and contribute to this thing called planetary health. Now, it is very transdisciplinary. And the transdisciplinarity of planetary health allows variety, mixing, and collaboration. Because if you can see the different um, themes, it can range from, let's say, hardcore sciences to arts and humanities, for example. And so it was an opportunity for us to offer this course as a special topics in UPLB um so we've offered this for three semesters now so these are the different learning coaches that are all all from our division professor saparalia you might be familiar with all of them so we assembled a team that is composed of different uh, faculty with different expertise in in the hopes of discussing this new field using different perspectives so ayan lang po siya. So next, so three parts. So these are the different um, um, topics there, which is, by the way, very related to Science 11. So if you take a look at the content, it's very Science 11. It's very living systems. This is the fifth. Interact interactivity and relatability makes a difference. It's very important na merong interaction at least or may relationship makaka-relate sila doon sa tinuturo ng sa subject matter at the same time sa kanilang peers sa kanilang kaklase so okay we do we do a lot of these synchronous sessions different topics that are related to planetary health ayan next 
even we we even discuss orchids <laughs> and the different colors how they evolve even insects no we scale insects infestations and of course citizen science no? how they can contribute to okay number 6 variety of evol evaluation tools may break monotony this is also something that is very that was very helpful i guess when i handled different courses in the university although sometimes departmental yung ano yung yung paggawa nung course outcomes yung mga evaluation but um lucky enough we were able to uh, still inject some of our own flavors into some of our courses no so we did a lot of forum questions as we normally do in online setup so make forum discussion where all of them where where, where the fic posts a particular question related to the topic and all of the students would um would um, contribute to the discussion so forum question is one I even asked my students, by the way, I posted this with permission. These are my advices. I even asked my students to create a vlog. Like, what can you say about the conservation status of the Tarshir? So she was talking about the Tarshir. It was fun because they had to, you know, edit it. They had to put pictures and they had to be very, um, very Toastmasters, very engaging, you know. So yeah, and vlog. Some e opted for infographics or posters, um, yeah, and even paintings. Some even did planetary uh, mind mapping, no, or diagrammatic representation of all the things that they have learned. This is from one of the the, the, the subjects. Next, specifically, not just variety, I know, not just variety, but also artistic and personal expression. Mam Tess and uh, Professor Makera know me as a person who loves arts, but I'm in the sciences. So I always try my best to, in to inject a little bit of art in everything that I do. So in some of the courses uh, that I handled, I tried to, to solicit artistic outputs from the students, whether it be a performance or an artwork or a simple poster, a simple poem, even. So sometimes there are there are avenues for that. And for Sci 11 in OU, I think we had, right? We had an option during the last, whether you can submit a video or an infographic or a poster. So we did that also in Sci 11 in OU. Next. So this one, the, the task was to create a mind map with minimum of three colors. And maximum of five. So that's as simple as that. Niya man kailangan na all using this perspective, this theory in art. Wala namang ganon. Yung simple lang po, like three color, minimum of three colors, maximum of five colors. So para when they meet their mind maps, meron silang kulay. <laughs> there's color and there's a vibrancy in their output. So in STS also, we did that. We I asked them to submit digital artwork. Some of them even presented um, their compositions. And of course, they had to explain its relationship to art and culture. Hindi lang siya just so that they could submit something of an art form, but also explain, you know, the relationship. Because Module 2 of, Sci of STS in UPLB dealt with science and culture next so these are just some of the different um outputs of the students and this really is one of my favorites this is from a student of mine and uh, sds1 the very first semester that we offered remote learning in up it was in first semester of 2020 2021 and um this is um this is her present this was her presentation during the arts night of that particular course and this really struck us so she says in here so this is a painting by her and then she took a picture of it and then she wrote there is a method called scarification nagsusugat 
scarification. Scaring a seed, weakening it, thinning its covering, cutting it open. Allows more minerals to come in, making it germinate and grow faster. And then she goes on to her second painting. After harvest season, farmers perform following, F-A-L-L-O-W-I-N-G, a period where they refrain from planting on arable land for it to recover. This is because continuous work on the soil will just lead to its depletion. This came in very timely because during that time, it was, do you remember the big typhoon in 2020? There was a big typhoon in November. I forgot, was it? What was that? The, yung, um, it flooded the entire Marikina area. I, it was in 2020, November. And remember, one of my students, I became, it was the first time that I became viral on Twitter. I posted the picture of the house of my student completely submerged underwater. He was um, an asynchronous student, meaning to say he was not required to attend synchronous session and we had to send to him the module for the entire semester. But he was really one of my best students ever because the igna yung yung synchronous kasi nang una pa siyang magpasa ng mga submissions niya. But their house was wiped off, really, literally. And this came in after that because everyone was so stressed. And this gave the class a reminder, sort of, of taking it one day at a time. You don't have to stress yourself and be, uh, be um, you don't have to be your own saboteur. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on yourself well, because we live in an extraordinary time. So I guess this is also a way of the students expressing themselves or helping other students for that matter to, to cope with the stress of the pandemic and whatever environmental stresses that they are experiencing. And lastly, evaluation is necessary for improvement. We do, um, I don't know, there is a, an SET or a student evaluation of teachers, but we do um, in-house evaluations. So, ayan, nagpapasurvey lang po ako kung ano yung tingin nila doon sa course. Okay, medyo mataas po yan kasi mabait po ako dyan sa course na yan. Hindi <laughs> sa SAI 11, hindi ko alam. <laughs> All right, so next. So overall, the overall satisfied. What can be done to improve? What can be done to improve teaching effectiveness? So I take them into account and uh, so that before we offer the same course in the following semesters, uh, we try our best to address the concerns and the comments of the students. Okay, just a summary of the key points that I just shared. Um, these seven points were constructed or <laughs> were uh, born out or uh, during the seven hour trip from LB or from Capones Island, Zambales to LB. And uh, we have to know our stakeholder situation as teachers. We have to be adaptable, we have to provide support, compassion, explore new things. Uh, interactions and rela relatability, variety of evaluation tools. If you can, artistic and personal expression can be encouraged. And of course, evaluation is necessary to make the, the virtual classroom as healthy and as non-toxic as possible. In UP Manila, they call it toxic or benign. We hope that our courses, the courses that we handle are benign and not toxic so i guess i leave you with that i'd like to thank you all for being here and um, i'd like to thank um the staff and uh, dr buot and all of our colleagues here at upou for this wonderful opportunity Marami pong salamat sa inyo and let's all be happy thank you <laughs>